Gaussian splatting is easier to do than ever before. I've been playing around with it for the last couple of months, and it's a brilliant way to create 3D models using home videos, found footage, and collections of photographs. Gaussian splats are impressionistic three-dimensional point clouds which capture the optics of the camera, the atmosphere of the space, and the materiality of its surfaces. They capture soft, fuzzy, organic forms, and glassy, shiny, and translucent objects. We can now do this process using all free software, and we can compute our models faster than ever using Glowmap. We can render our splats in Blender, and we can composite 3D objects into them, which also happens to help with the process of motion tracking. So I'm going to take you through how I created this Gaussian splat here and show you how you can do it at home for free. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert this video into still frames so we can process it as a photogrammetry model. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Blender 4.5 and I'm going to go over to the video editing workspace. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my footage into the video timeline and I'm going to snap it to the playhead here. Now if I zoom out a little bit and then press Ctrl T you can see how many frames are in this footage and if I wanted to constrain the scene duration to this strip I can go to view range and set frame range to strips and because my footage is only about 175 frames long this should be perfectly fine but your footage might be longer in fact it might be quite a bit longer and so if you're in the region of 400 500 frames or perhaps even more than that you might want to consider reducing it to make the photogrammetry processing a little bit quicker so if your clip is quite long, what you can do is you can go over here to the output properties and you can set the frame range end to something like 250. Then what you can do is you can click on your strip, press Ctrl R and you should see these two little keyframe indicators pop up. This controls the rate of the clip. If you select the one on the right hand side and then drag it to the scene end, you can see that your clip has now been constrained to 250 frames. In my case, however, I only have 175 frames to worry about, so I'm not going to do that. So with my duration set for my clip, I can go back here over to the output properties and I can choose the location to save my images. So I'm going to go over to the project folder and I'm going to create a new folder which is called images. I'm going to select that folder and then for my file format, I'm going to choose PNG. You can also use JPEG for this, but PNG is going to be slightly higher quality. And so with those options selected, I can go to render and then render animation. And it's going to export all of those still frames to this folder called images. And now I can close Blender and I don't need to save the file. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. We're going to need to download two pieces of software in order to calculate the photogrammetry. The first of which is called Colmap, and the second of which is called Glowmap. So I'm going to download Colmap. I'm going to go to the Releases section here, and I'm going to choose Colmap X64 for Windows CUDA because I have a graphics card that's compatible with CUDA. And so once Colmap is downloaded, I'm going to extract it, and I'm going to put it into a folder called Colmap. Next, I'm going to download Glowmap, so I'm going to go over here to Releases, and I'm going to download the latest version, again, Glowmap x64 Windows CUDA. And once that's finished downloading, again, I'm going to extract the contents, and I'm going to move those into a new folder, which is called Glowmap. So now we have our Colmap folder and our Glowmap folder. So what we need to do now is we need to make sure that the operating system can recognize these two pieces of software. And in order to do that, we need to edit the environment variables for Windows. So I'm going to type in environment variables, and I'm going to click here where it says environment variables. I'm going to scroll down to where it says path. I'm going to double click on path, and then I'm going to go over to the location where the Colmap executable is. And then I'm going to choose the folder called bin. So I'm going to copy this path, I'm going to add a new path here in my environment variables and I'm going to paste the path of that bin folder into there. Now what we need to do is we need to go back and we need to find the same thing for Glowmap. So I'm going to double click on Glowmap, click on the bin folder and I'm going to choose this path. I'm going to add a new entry into my environment variables and I'm going to paste Glowmap in there. So you should see one entry for Colmap and you can see another entry for Glowmap. Once that's set up you can press OK, press OK again press OK, and now your system should be able to recognize these two pieces of software. OK, so I'll put a link in the description to this, but the next thing you need to do is download this Python file, which is called runglowmap.py, and we're going to use this to calculate our photogrammetry. So I'm going to go over here to the header of the file browser, and I'm going to type in cmd. 
and that's going to open up a console window which is going to give me the ability to run commands. The command that I want to run is python run glowmap.py and then we need to type dash dash image path and then we need to specify the path where our images are saved and an easy way to do this is to just click and drag your images folder into the command line and now our command is ready so what we can do is we can press enter and it's going to start using whole map and glow map to process those images into a photogrammetry model. Sometimes this can be quite fast, sometimes it can be a bit slow. It really depends how many images you have and what resolution those images are. Okay, so for me the process took 76.68 seconds. That's quite fast for a photogrammetry reconstruction. Okay, so now we can close this command line. And the next thing we need to do is download the photogrammetry importer for Blender. I'm going to go over to the releases section and I'm going to download photogrammetry importer.zip. I'm going to save that to my software folder. And then with Blender open, what I can do is I can drag this photogrammetry importer.zip into Blender and then I can choose OK to install the add on. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually restart Blender. So I'm going to close it and then I'm going to open it again. And to make this add on work, we need to install some dependencies. So I'm going to go to edit preferences. I'm going to search for photogrammetry, expand that, and if you scroll down you should see that there are some dependencies that need to be installed and I would recommend doing this one by one. So first I'm going to click on install setup tools. Now in this case I got an error because setup tools was already installed. So I'm going to ignore that error for now and I'm going to install pillow. I'm going to install lasers. I'm going to install laspy and finally I'm going to install pint cloud. Now I'm going to close this dialog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the default objects in the scene. I'm going to go to file import and I'm going to select the option call map model workspace. I'm going to navigate to my demo folder and I'm going to choose the folder which is called sparse. Within the folder sparse I'm going to choose the folder called zero. And this is the first attempt at the photogrammetry. You should see that there are a few files in here. I'm going to use the default settings from the add-on and I'm going to press import call map model. Now I got an error that some images were missing but this doesn't matter for now. Inside of your scene you should see that there is a kind of point cloud and there is a bunch of cameras that are the cameras camera frames that we exported. Now you can see that this isn't properly oriented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to maximize Blender. I'm going to press A to select all. I'm going to collapse this collection that's called cameras and I'm going to control click on OpenGL point cloud. And then with that selected and my cursor in the 3D viewport, I'm going to press control P and I'm going to parent all of the objects to that OpenGL point cloud empty. Now what I can do is I can click on the OpenGL point cloud and I can rotate it. So if I press R and then X, I can rotate it on the X axis and I can make it so all of the buildings that we have in our photogrammetry are pointing upwards. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now what I can do is I can go to my outliner here, search for animated, and you should see a camera called animated. And if I select that and then press control number pad zero, that will take me inside of the animated camera. Now if I press the spacebar to play the animation, you should see that the camera moves through the point cloud much as it should based on the video. And so this is how we transform the 3D model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save my file. Okay, so in order to create our Gaussian splat, we need to use this piece of software which is called Brush. So I'm going to put a link in the description, but you can go over here to the releases section and scroll down to the release. In this case, I'm going to download the Windows zip file. And I'm going to save that to my software folder alongside the other softwares that we download. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it Brush App. I'm going to drag the Brush App into that folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract it. And you should see that that creates a file which is called brushapp.exe. So I'm going to click on that file and you can see here this is the brush app. Now in order to make this work we need to load up our sparse reconstruction from before. So now with the brush app open I'm going to go to the directory option here. I'm going to navigate to the project folder and I'm just going to select the top level here, press select, and then you should see that you are given these options. Now these are the different settings that you can use to run brush with and to begin with I would recommend just leaving it at the default. Press start and you should start to see a Gaussian splat emerging. 
So what's happening here is that my computer is creating thousands and thousands of Gaussian splats, and then it's adjusting them based on the images from the original data set down here. And if I click on this little expand icon here, and then I move through the frames, you can see that it takes us through the different camera positions and shows us the different three-dimensional perspectives of the Gaussian splat. Whilst it's working, you can use the WASD keys to move around the scene, and you can also use the Q and E buttons to move up and down. So I'm going to run my Gaussian splat for 10,000 frames, but you can run it for longer or you can run it for a shorter period of time. So now that we're at 10,000 steps, I'm going to go over here to the controls and I'm going to choose the export option. And I'm going to save that to my project folder, press save. And now I'm going to close the brush app to stop it from running. So in order to import the Gaussian splat into Blender, we need to use this Kiri 3D GS render add-on. And the latest version is actually for Blender 5. So I'm gonna go over to here where it says releases, and I'm gonna scroll down to version 4.0, expand the assets, and then I'm gonna download that zip file there. Save that to my software folder. And when that's downloaded, you can just drag it into Blender. Press OK to install. So I'm gonna expand Blender. I'm gonna go outside of my camera so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna press the end panel here. And you can see that there is an option which is 3D GS render. I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna press import PLY. I'm going to import that PLY that we exported from the brush app. And you should see that a bunch of points come in like this. With my PLY selected, I'm going to control click on the OpenGL point cloud empty, press control P and select parent to object without inverse. And then you should see that the Gaussian point cloud aligns with the original point cloud. Now in order to see the splats, what we need to do is we need to press the render option here. And then if we turn off our original point cloud by control clicking on this object here, you should see that you just have the splat. And so now we're able to navigate around our Gaussian splat. If we go back inside that animated camera and press play, you can see that the camera is moving through the splat along the line of those original cameras that we imported. We can turn those off as well to make it more clear. And we can also add objects into this 3D scene. So if I press shift A, I can add a cube, place that somewhere inside the world, and you can see that it does interact with the scene. Could also add the Suzanne in there, place that inside the scene. And so you can see if I go over here to the render tab, it's going to by default render the color pass to the temporary directory. So if I press render, you can see that's here. It's created a frame, which is just the Gaussian splat. However, you can do a combined pass so if I select this option here, combine with native render, and then render that frame, you can see that it creates this uh, frame here, which is composite. And you can see there we've got the Gaussian splat mixed in with the 3D objects. And you can also render a um, depth pass, and that will create something that looks a bit like this. So there are some compositing options available to you. And so this is how you can get a Gaussian splat into Blender. And um, I found this to be really uh, enjoyable experience um, and I hope you can create some fun stuff with it too. Okay, well done for making it to the end of the video. Just a quick note about versions. Most of the steps in this process work on Blender 5, except for step four, which is importing the photogrammetry model. Um, and it's possible that in the future that will start working. And if it does, I'll update the description to include the version of photogrammetry imported that you need to use. Thanks.